Good afternoon all. Today I thought I'd have another look at this inverter, this DC to AC inverter. And the spec on eBay is that it's 12 volt DC in, 220 volt AC out. But this time, um, because of the comments that I got on the last video, I thought I'd do it with this capacitor, this blue capacitor, in circuit. Last time I had this shorted out and I had these bulbs directly on the uh, secondary winding of the transformer. This time I'm going to send power through that capacitor and through these bulbs. Now today's desktop surface is the Union Jack or the Union flag, a symbol of unity between, well, England, Ireland and Scotland apparently. Um, these used to be our dinner mats and strangely my wife threw them out last Friday the 24th of June. Curious. Now with the capacitor shorted out, to light these bulbs I was having to put uh, about 4 volts in at about 2 amps. So that's where I'm going to start uh, with this test. Now of course the capacitor is in circuit this time. Let's switch on. And actually nothing happens. Oh, perhaps it does a little bit. Yes they are very slightly lit but they're extremely dim so that's 4 volts um, at about 70 milliamps and that's dropping ever so slightly well let's take the voltage up so let's go up to 6 volts 8 volts they're brightening up 10 volts I think we can probably go all the way to about 12 and a half volts which is the maximum I can get out of this because I'm only putting uh, 13 and a half volts in and yeah these bulbs are reasonably brightly lit this time through that blue capacitor. Now let's look at the current we've only got 170 milliamps uh, flowing on the input side 12 and a half volts 160 milliamps now uh, the current is dropping, but these transistors are not warm at all. So what is changing in this circuit to make this current drop? Well, it turns out that this blue capacitor is getting warm. That's warming up. Now, I don't want to get too close to the output side of this because there's quite a lot of volts on there. So let's turn that off. Feel the capacitor. And yeah, that's quite warm almost hot but not really no just warm so what actually is this device let's get in really close well i'm pretty certain it is a capacitor it says jnc jn 222m so i'm assuming it's a 2.2 nanofarad now down at the bottom it says 440 volts ac x1 and 400 volts ac Y1, so presumably the X and the Y uh, parameters are slightly different, or at least the, I don't know, limits or limitations are different, but that's the spec. I believe it's a 2.2 nanofarad high voltage capacitor. So what we've got here is a capacitor dropper, because we've got the secondary winding of the transformer going through the capacitor and then into this resistive load. There's quite a bit of voltage, I think, being dropped across that capacitor. I think we'll have to measure that in a moment, but let's just switch on again. Now, initially, there was about 300 milliamps of current flowing, but that drops away really quite quickly. These bulbs start getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, and this drops down eventually to about 150 milliamps. And I can only assume, because these transistors aren't really getting very warm at all, that um, the capacitor changes its capacitance, maybe, as it warms up. I don't know. Now, I'm not sure that we're going to learn a lot by putting DVMs across the bulbs or the capacitor or indeed the secondary of the transformer because they measure RMS volts. And whether they can do that at the sort of uh, tens of kilohertz that this thing is oscillating at is open to question. So I think I'm going to go straight for the oscilloscope. I'm going to hook it up to watch uh, the output of the secondary of the transformer 
and then also the voltage across just the bulbs. So here it is with the uh, scope probes hooked up. Now they're both on times 10 because there's quite a high voltage here. Um, I'm looking at on red, there's red, the output across the secondary of the transformer on yellow, which is this near probe. I'm looking at the voltage across just the lamps. Let's switch on. Now, of course, can't see anything on the screen, so I will get the camera more close to the screen. Okay, let's switch on. Now, I can't get the waveforms any smaller than that because I'm right down at the minimum 5 volts per division. But because I'm on times 10, I'm actually on 50 volts per division. So I've got a huge voltage of, well, this is saying 500 volts, peak to peak, that is, of amplitude there. So I'm going to have to bring the voltage of the um, my power supply down to get this to fit on the screen of the scope. So instead of 12 volts, let's take this down to... about there, so about... 6.4 volts because that uh, means that the red waveform which is the output the secondary uh, winding of this transformer just fits on the scope I can't actually turn that desensitize that anymore so that'll have to do so at that voltage 6.4 volts um, it's only drawing 80 milliamps the bulbs are just lit not very brightly um, but let's look at the screen of the scope so the output from the uh, secondary of the transformer, the red trace, is a very nice looking uh, pure sine wave. We've got 25 kilohertz of oscillation and that's very useful um, because that just happens to mean that um, from the peaks it's four divisions. That will come in handy later on. So the amplitude of the uh, secondary transformer winding output is about 360 volts. Now that is peak to peak, so that's top of the positive, bottom of the negative. That means that peak voltage from zero is about 180 volts in each direction. And I've put the RMS voltage up, which is showing as 128 volts. I'm not sure whether that's uh, going to be absolutely precise because of this frequency. It's, it's hard to tell. Uh, the amplitude of the voltage across the lamps, which is the yellow trace, is much, much lower. So low, in fact, that the scope can't work it out, but I can get it to do it if I turn the gain up on the um, yellow trace. And all sorts of things come into focus there. The amplitude of the um, across the lamps is only 16.4 volts, so the capacitor is dropping a lot of volts from 366 down to 16.4. But also, other things are happening. Firstly, there's a funny spike uh, on the top and bottom of the uh, waveform of the voltage across the lamps. Now, the only thing I can think that might be causing that is that the lamps have a coiled uh, tungsten filament. So that's going to be inductive. So maybe there's some sort of interaction between the capacitor dropper and the inductiveness of the load, these light bulbs. But perhaps more importantly, it's out of phase with the voltage across the secondary output of the transformer. It's out of phase by almost exactly, well, exactly, we assume, 90 degrees. Because of this very convenient 25 kilohertz, you can see that we've got 90, 180, 270, 360 degrees between the peaks. So this single, um, uh, what's that, gradation on the scope? There, there's a name for it, I can't remember what it is at the moment. Uh, shows that the uh, phase, now what is it, lag I suppose it is, yeah there's a phase lag, this is coming later across the lamps, 90 degrees. Now with both the uh, red input and the yellow input on the same 50 volts per division, you can see that there's a, is a huge drop in voltage across the uh, lamps relative to the output of the transformer, so that capacitor must have quite a large reactance relative to the resistance of these bulbs. And we can actually work it out because there's a formula for reactance of a capacitor. It is 1 over 2 pi Fc. 
uh, where f is the frequency and c is the capacitance. So f will be 25,000 because we're running at about 25 kilohertz. And c, which is expressed in farads, oh, that's a tricky one. Well, it's 2.2 farads uh, divided by 1,000. That's millifarads divided by 1,000. That's microfarads divided by 1,000. That's nanofarads. So that is the capacitance in farads. So let's multiply that by 25,000, which is the uh, frequency f. And we get that number. Let's multiply that by 2 pi, which is about 6.28. And we get that number. And now I need to do 1 over that number. Well, I've got no 1 over on this calculator. So uh, put it in the memory. 1 divided by the memory is 2,895. So the reactance of that capacitor is equivalent to a resistance of about 2.9K. So here's the output circuit, the secondary of the transformer, the capacitor, which has a reactance of 2.9 kilo ohms, and these three bulbs, which actually say on them uh, 12 volts at 0.1 amps. So resistance is uh, R equals V over I, so that's 12 divided by 0.1. They're 120 ohms each, so we've got 360 ohms there. So if we look at this as a potential divider, um, we've got 360 out of 2900. Uh, that's 0.12. So what we're saying is that the voltage across the lamps is uh, not much more than a tenth of the voltage coming out of the secondary of the transformer. And uh, certainly the uh, waveform voltage across the bulbs relative to the Secondary looks about that, although the numbers don't seem to quite tie up because my scope is saying 16 volts uh, across the lamps and 360 on the secondary. Mm, that's about, well, greater than 20 to 1. So something doesn't quite add up. Now that could be for a number of reasons. Uh, the filaments in these lamps are quite cool. So that means they're going to have a lower resistance uh, than if these lamps were running at full brightness. If they have a lower resistance, then of course there will be a, a greater ratio between uh, this resistance and this resistance. Maybe that's what's causing this. So that's what happens with this inverter device. If I leave the capacitor in circuit, it acts as a capacitor dropper. The voltage across these lamps is uh, much, much less than the voltage across the secondary of the transformer. Um, let's raise this up to about 12 and a bit volts. Uh, the scope doesn't like it. That's, that's gone into saturation there. Um, the bulbs are about as bright, I think, as when I had uh, 4 volts, 2 amps going into here. These transistors, got to be careful not to touch the output of this, don't get warm at all, but that blue capacitor does seem to get quite hot when it's acting as a capacitor dropper. Now, all sorts of theories in the comments from yesterday's video about what this capacitor might be there for. Um, capacitor dropper, possibly, uh, certainly that's what I'm using it for today. Someone also suggested that this might be used as a capacitor to tie uh, this point in the circuit down to chassis. Uh, that's another possibility. I don't know much about that kind of stuff. Now it's quite possible that I could use uh, a capacitor in the output of my circuit, which is going to transfer energy from a single lithium cell to the entire pack. I could use a capacitor as some sort of current limiting de device to limit the current being transferred from the lithium cell to the pack, maybe just the simple addition of a capacitor could be used to set that rate of uh, charge transfer, that rate of current. And uh, I've been trying to teach myself more about AC uh, alternating current theory and capacitor droppers in preparation for my uh, kit build of this 
LED DIY lamp. Cheerio.